Welcome back to the channel guys, where today you join us with Sam from Golf Repairs for You and we're at Evolution Golf Academy at Almondsfield Golf Club where I'm going to be having my first ever tour driver fitting. Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm really looking forward to this because I've only ever been fitted by a manufacturer and I was fitted for the Stealth 2 driver this year but it's got the stock shaft in it, the, the Rogue 70X. Yeah. And you guys will know if you subscribe to the channel that I've been struggling a little bit with this, Sam, more on feel. Every time yeah. I get fitted, I feel like fitters don't listen to me. I tell them that I don't like a shaft that feels too stiff. Yeah. But I always end up with a 70 gram extra stiff shaft. Yeah. yeah. And it, honestly, it's not just like one fitter. It seems to be all the fitters. They don't seem to listen to what I'm telling them. They're obviously trying to get me the best numbers on the launch monitor, yeah. but they don't appreciate how I actually feel with the club. It's just trying to get the best feel, but obviously optimise your numbers at the same time, but it, it should be doable. Like, so there's enough shaft options to, to achieve, I believe. Well, there's some so. weight on your shoulders today, so right, okay. you've got some pressure on you. <laughs> no. uh, but it looks like we've got plenty the, of shafts to try. A, definitely a fair few to choose from, so I'm sure we'll find something. Which range in price a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, similar to if anyone else has seen my other videos, similar pricing, kind of 70 to 300. Um, so it's kind of a shaft for anyone's budget, really. I am from Yorkshire, <laughs> but on this occasion, and I'm not, not very often I say it, I've come here with no budget because I think after yeah. what I saw with Dan's fitting and after just briefly trying a high-end spec shaft, I couldn't believe the difference in feel. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's drawn me back down here because... I'm not, yeah, I am a bit of a club perv, but don't get me wrong, Sam, I'm from Yorkshire, I don't like to overspend on clubs, and yeah, the yeah. thought of putting £300 into a club that already costs £500 is, is, is stupid, but yeah. I'm saying that without actually trying it. When you yeah. give me that shaft of the day, I was like, just take my money. It's like, yeah. I couldn't believe. End of the day, it's just justifying what you, you know, what you can achieve from it. There'll you know, be people sat at it. home probably thinking that I'm just trying to sell you services, but listen, I'm going to be spending my own money on getting a shaft today, and because I, I would have even thought what you guys thought probably and thought, well, it can't make that much difference, but you could probably explain a little bit more. Well, you did to me off camera on why, yeah. you know, a more expensive shaft does actually make a difference, and it gives you so much more fitting options, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. Anyway, let's get going. Oh, right. Yeah, so we'll get you hitting a few of your drive. I'll see, you know, see what number you're kind of creating, and we can work out what route to go down, really. Yeah. Um, right, so if I just double check your spec, it's obviously, yeah, set on nine degrees, standard loft. Obviously, you've never played about with weights. Anything's kind of come stock from the factory. Yeah. And like I said, um, yeah, I'll deal a Rogue Silver 70X. Like I said, that's going to be the main thing for me, seeing if you... you Could we just see what swing off. weight it is before we start? Yeah, of course you can. And all the reason I've said that is, guys, is that I've been saying to Sam that I feel like my swing weight's too heavy. Like, it just feels too heavy, and I don't know if it is or, or what, you know. Yeah, so let's see what it's coming up at. Yeah, so it's coming up at D3, which is a pretty normal swing weight. Is it? But obviously the main thing that's a bit different is the total mass. The total right. mass of the club's quite heavy. Obviously you've got heavy grip, being yeah. mid-size, heavy shaft. So it's trying to work out if you prefer heavy swing weight or heavy mass. They're not always linked up, Ma basically. Maybe I'm getting confused with heavy mass then, aren't Potentially. I? The whole weight of the club feels heavy. Yeah, yeah. and like I said, as soon as you go lighter, like I said, that's going to affect a lot of the numbers. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily affect swing weight because, again, we've got the weights in the head. We can easily, you know, put a, you can put like a 40-gram shaft in and make it a heavier swing weight if you wanted to. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's not always a case that heavy shaft means heavy swing weight. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so like I said, if we... Hit a few to warm up. I have actually already hit some balls, guys, as well. This is just a warm up for Sam to see the numbers into it. Yeah, yeah. We'll, know, we'll, what... we'll check the data now. I've uh, loosened up a little bit. Yeah. Like I said, in terms of the data, generally everything's yeah pretty decent ball spin. I wouldn't feel like there's any kind of to take out. Nothing was like I'd say Not really least. bad strike. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, definitely. Obviously, the main issue for me is more the direction of the club at the minute. Like I said, it, it's you look at kind of the going across. 
Yeah, so it's a face angle and path. I said path 6.1, I've not got a huge issue with that as long as you can get the face angle to match where the minute the face angle is kind of shutting more than what the path is. Right. It, they're both pretty consistent, but that's the main thing for me, getting your face a lot more closer to neutral and then yeah. you will get that fade back. Yeah. Uh, in terms of your data with like your launch and spin, uh, quite a low launch, it does fluctuate a little bit, you know, yeah. kind of 1.8 deviation. Uh, but like I said, your highest one's peaking, you know, 12.8. So even that's, you know, a slightly on the low side. Yeah. Um, well, again, obviously, if you are shutting the face, that's just going to kind of deal off the club. Yeah. Um, and then again, spin rate as an average is good. But again, just a bit of a fluctuation, you know, a couple very low spinny ones. That's a bit higher, 3-1. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, like I said, the face angle's got a lot to do with that thing. Because the face is shutting more and with the path you're creating, I think it's just not helping with kind of a fluctuation. Yeah. Um, and again, potentially, with kind of your club head speed, you know, averaging 107, you are, in terms of like what you're wanting in terms of feel, yeah. I think you would be better trying stiff options first because I think yeah. straight away it's going to help with feel. It's going to help with launch as well, get it is, a little bit higher. Is that speed, you know, probably a reason why they've gone into X? It's hard to say. I mean, to be honest, especially 70X, yeah. you've got to be... Normally, it'd be one way you'd probably launch and spin it very high and put yeah. it heavier to get it down, yeah. but you hit it low anyway with yeah. quite a low spin. So it don't make a great deal of sense in a way why they've gone down that route. And like I said, generally when I fit people and we're kind of around about 107 and, and we need to go X, it's generally quite a light X to make it play a bit softer. You were saying because the stock shafts though, they might have gone X to tr give that stability, you know, in the shaft. Potentially, um, but again, I think, you know, especially myself too, you've got quite a few decent options in yeah. stiff flex. You know, like Cali White, which is a good kind of low launch, low spin option. You know, that's for plenty firm enough in like a 60 stiff for you. Yeah. Same for like the Hazards Gem 4. Well, I think, yeah, I think to get the feel, and yeah. I think to get kind of a bit more ball speed. So if you look at your smash factor, yeah. so obviously, uh, if you look at, remember Dan's video, if anyone's seen that, we, we had Foresight software, which works a bit different with smash factor. Yeah. So their optimum foresight is about 1.45, but with Trapman, it's about 1.5. Yeah. So you are potentially losing a little bit of ball speed with the kind of what the club edge speed you're creating. So you can definitely get close to kind of, you know, 158, 160 potentially if you maintain the same club edge speed. Yeah. But yeah, I think main thing is obviously trying to get the dispersion better. Obviously by getting that face a bit more open yeah. um, and then obviously by going softer, hopefully that's going to help you launch and spin as well. He's, he's getting it open by obviously changing the weights here. Not a great deal, right. reason being it's not a sliding weight like the plus where yeah. you could go fade and draw. Yeah. Like I said, a plus head would potentially work better for you. Mm. Uh, but obviously we're just looking at the shaft at the moment. Um, but like I said, one thing we can do is obviously change the loft as well. Yeah. If, you, if you knock it down lower, that's going to open up a face, but obviously we don't want to go any lower than what it is. So it's been making a shaft that's going to help get the launch back up. Right. So I think that's the first thing I want to do is try something... Um, Lower loft to help with a face angle at first, but then get yeah. a shaft to counteract that, basically. That's amazing, because no one in the world has ever fitted me for a higher launching shaft. Yeah. Every, yeah. Everybody that's fitted me in the past has gone for a higher kick, lower launch, lower spin. Yeah. It, I, I, I know, know we're not yeah. concluding by saying no, that's but the direction it's hard, we're going in. It's hard to see why they've gone down that route. Yeah. Um, like I said, I think... Yeah, but the chef we tried last time when you only tried one was a Darmon a GT60 stiff, which is yeah. mid launch, low spin, it's nothing crazy high. But I think because it was so much softer and you had better feel, yeah. if that improved your ball speed, I think your launch went up as well. So I think we'll try that chef first, because yeah. that's what you tried last time. And then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. Guys, this could be quite one of our longer videos, because we are going to try and capture as much as we can. Yeah. It's not going to be for everybody, but there's a, there's a lot of people out there, Sam, when we did Dan's fitting, that they would have liked to have seen yeah. you know, the full fit. So, um, yeah, if you're into being seeing a good fitting, then this will be the video for you. Yeah, it's hard to cut stuff out, and, and like I said, then not feel like you're yeah, cutting corners, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, but like I said, we're not, we're not going to be cutting any corners, so yeah, we'll see what we can do for you. Right, so we're going to go... Down on a GT60 stiff. I'm gonna go a little bit lower at first just to try and help with the face angle. Um, and then like I said, it's I'm hoping, you know, being a little bit softer, that's gonna help kind of get the launch. But like I said, it's just gonna be interesting to see what we can do with face angle um, for now. So let's we'll see how this goes. And then I'll just check the uh, swing weight again. 
Just need to bear in mind that's a standard size grip. So swing weight can be a bit different to what it would be with a mid-size, but we can obviously get the weight and the head change to achieve the same swing weight. But at the moment, it's a little bit heavier. That's I think because mainly the grip's a little bit lighter. So yeah, it's D four and a half. So you might feel a little bit different for now. Yeah. We do need to try different swing weights to see what's your preference. Yeah. So I won't change anything for now in terms of the weights. Right. So like I said, see what you think. It might feel too heavy, might feel like you can go even heavier. Um, but like I said, we'll, we'll see what we can uh, do with it. So if it feels heavier, does that mean that I'm going to feel less of the shaft? Sorry, less of the head? No, you should feel more of a head more if the swing weight goes heavier, yeah. Right. So Obviously, it... we've gone only a little bit heavier swing weight, but the shaft yeah. weight's dropped. So and if it's heavier, would that mean as I'm coming into the ball, the head's lagging behind more? Uh, yeah, I mean, like... if you think to lie about fake ping 300, which was like insanely heavy, yeah. yeah, you'll get here and you can't release the club. Right. So again, heavier might help with your face angle as well. Keep the club face Obviously, open. we can go quite a bit heavier than this. Yeah. Um, so like I said, yeah, by going a bit heavier and then obviously, um, yeah, yeah, different shaft preference and you know, shaft spec, hopefully it should uh, help you a lot. Right, so when you're ready. It feels like nicer from the ball. Like, yeah. You know, so, it's as though it's made the head feel nicer to hit. Yeah, it'd be a lot smoother, but it is surprising that we change shafts, the acoustics can change as well. Yeah, I can't say that I can feel a great deal like as I'm swinging the golf club, but at impact as the club strikes the ball, it almost makes it feel softer. Yeah, yeah. So Don't like, are renowned for being very kind of smooth feeling, especially smooth. compared to the road. Yeah, smooth's probably the right word. I mean, that's a little bit left, but in terms of launch and spin, a lot better number. Face yeah. angle was actually under the path, which is what we're needing. Um, I'm feeling like the weight of the club more, you know, the head. Yeah. Which I think is a nice feeling. Do you prefer that? It's probably more, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. But it shows that you could potentially go a bit heavier. And like I so said, that's then going to help the face angle more as well because it would be harder to release. If I relate it to like, and I've said this off camera before, guys, sometimes I'll pick a juniors club up, just messing about in a junior lesson or a, a ladies club, and I can feel and, you know, I can feel shots more. Yeah. With my club, I can't do that. It feels just like a, an iron board. And yeah. I, when I feel the weight of the head, I don't know, I'm not a, a great golf, but from playing all my life, I can like feel shapes. Yeah, yeah. And, and picture them. But you when, just get better time. You feel like you can slow it down a bit more. Yeah, but when I can't feel the head, I just don't have that control. So it's nice to feel the, the mass of the club at the bottom, which I think I am doing with this one a little bit more. Oh, just slow it out the data. Was that too long? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, broke the screen. Just slightly out of hitting zone. It's picked up some data, but not everything. I'm going to ask you a question here as well. And, you know, I've come obviously for a new shaft, and I said to you, if we can work with this head, yeah. I'd like to have said, because obviously, you know, price is always something we've got to consider. But, I, you know, I'm going to be honest, if you feel as though, you know, you need something with that sliding weight, or then I, obviously I would look to. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I think we definitely need to look at a different head as an option. Uh, reason being, if we went more loft, means we could knock the, face, the loft down more, which yeah. opens the face. And then, like I said, if we looked at, say, the plus version of a tailor-made, yeah. you've got the fade weight, we can put and slide it across, which it, everything's just going to help get your face more square. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you're open to it, I think it's definitely worth trying another head as well as. Yeah. But I think it is a combination of the two. I feel like your current shaft's too firm too heavy, I mean, yeah. like I said, I think the head's too low lofted and it's not got the right characteristics that you need, basically. Yeah. Um, but I mean, in terms of data so far, um, you know, a little bit quicker ball speed, a bit more consistent, which is good. So you're actually swinging it slower, Yeah. Um, but like I say, quicker ball speed, so your smash factor's gone up a fraction. Um, launch, 11.2, it's a little bit higher. I mean, like I said, spin at the moment's a bit lower. 
Yeah. Um, Mainly due to that last shot, really. Uh, oh, sorry, first shot. But like I said, deviation's a lot better, which is good. Um, but then, data. So path's basically identical, but it's moved the face a little bit. So obviously, you 8.1 shot before, now you're 7.4. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely a bit of an improvement there. And if you look at distance, so you're 283 average before, you've gone 289. So it's gone yeah. just about five and a half yards further, carries a fraction further. But again, obviously, as an average, side totals, how far it is left or right. So obviously before you're 134 feet left, now you're 104 left. So, so already we've brought right it in direction. 10 yards. Yeah. Uh, so again, if you look at dispersion, you'll see that as well. Uh, it's yeah. So yeah. already it's moved a lot. You know, it's took rid of out of four of your shots. Yeah. Where like you know the three most left is still more right than four of yours. Yeah. And then obviously that one there is even straighter. So already it's shifted it quite yeah. a lot, which is good. But like I said, I feel like different head yeah. is definitely going to shift that even more. The other reason we went for this head were is that it was the more forgiving head. Yeah. Um, and that was the other reason. We weren't. We never considered the sliding. I mean, he never even talks about that, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, like I said, a lot of people will get scared of going to like a less forgiving head. But if you can set up the club where, you know, the swing is correct, so you get the timing, you get the shaft that's correct for you. Yeah. That kind of gets your forgiveness from that side. Yeah. And then, like I said, but if it's a head that's going to produce you better, you know, whether it's shot shape, whether it's spin, you know, yeah. it, it's it's easily achievable. So, so this lower, or what people might perceive as a, a lower handicappers club, yeah. it could even be fitted to more of a mid to handicapper if necessary. Yeah, definitely. Like, as long as they're pretty consistent across the face, yeah. which hopefully, again, you know, getting the right weight, getting the right shaft is going to achieve that, then, yeah, yeah it, I don't think it's definitely out of the question. I mean, I've had it before when I've done, like, a PXG fitting. I've had someone where he's been 22 handicapper, I fitted him yeah. into a seven and a half degree head, down to yeah. six. And we achieved, but we managed to set it all, but it was still forgiving. Yeah. But it was just how he hit the ball. He just hit it very high and you know, managed to gain a decent distance from doing yeah. it. So, yeah, it's not always a case for lower handicap clubs for a lower handicapper. Yeah. Definitely not. If we do decide to look for different heads as well, I just want to say this. I'm not opposed to trying different brands. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to have the title TSI 3 and I love that head. Yeah, and so like a TSR three, you know, that'd yeah, be another option, a I, similar thing. I, I kind of did regret, not regret, but you know, I don't mind tailor made, um, but you know, if, if end ever, of the day, it's whatever works. I've got to be honest, like I, I did used to enjoy the Tartus driver. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, yeah, I think we now try same shaft but different yeah, head, yeah. and then see what that does to the data. Then we'll right. know straight away if the head's making a big difference. Really. Like I said, so we're going to be going self two plus now ten and a half degree. Yeah. Like I said, because of this going more loft, we can obviously not the face down more. Uh, you know, we could go as low as say eight and a half, which is going to be similar loft to what we just tried, but with a lot more open face angle. Yeah. And then like I said, we've got the sliding weight, so we can get that into fade. And again, it's it, we're just doing everything we can to get the face more neutral yeah uh, so like i said it got a lot lot more higher chance of kind of achieving that now so i'm going to go to straight away to lower yeah so you've gone with 10 and a half but then lowering it to yeah. open the face yeah so again that's a big thing you know definitely in a fit in his face angle you know yeah. it, you can definitely kind of tweak about we're going lower loft or you know you could go like nine degree knock top that's going to get your face short or vice yeah. versa you know if that's really going to go that next step in so terms if you were game, someone yeah. that sliced it and you're used to using like a 10.5 you might go nine degree head and yeah loft up. which is it's surprising like you know you'd like tell them if they do like the hd in a nine degree but you never yeah. see it in the fitting kit which yeah. is shocking for me because like i said it they're the ones where you need to face more shots. So if yeah. you had a nine degree locked up, you got even more chance of doing it. Yeah. But you just never see it in the um, But like, so we've got it here because I kind of requested of, of having People it. People would assume that if you're going to get the HD, you get the 10 off. But actually, yeah. nine set up there would be even more closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for a lot of people, definitely. So like I said, I'm just going to check the swing weight again. Obviously, changing different head. You know, the head weight might be a little bit different. Yeah, so it's gone up a little bit more. Not much, but... It'd be probably good for me to try, though, won't it, to see... Yeah, again, going heavy, it. that's going to help even more, really, in terms yeah. of trying to get the face a bit square. So that's going to D5 and a half. Um, 
Oh, I've learned something cool. today that the total club mass and swing weight are not related. No, they're not related. And I think I might have been confused with that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think I've probably been wanting a, a lighter club mass, not it, necessarily Yeah, it, it can easily be done. Um, like I said, because they are, they can be how hard to kind of feel the difference, but yeah, definitely, they're not well, the same thing. I'll tell you what does relate is the heavier the swing weight gets, the more, to me, that it feels like the overall weight of the club's getting heavier, because I'm feeling yeah. the head more. Yeah, so like I said, it's, obviously we're adding, a lot of times you, you can add mass to the head, which obviously yeah. brings up a total mass, but yeah, like I said, it's, as soon as the swing weight goes up, the total mass will still feel heavier, even though it might not necessarily be. Um, I don't know if it's a placebo thing as well, but I just, it feels nice to swing in this shaft. Yeah, yeah, like I said, it, it's just a high-end shaft, so like I said, it's always going to feel yeah, a bit nicer to use. But yeah, so like I said, that's down to eight and a half now. Um, weight and fade. Again, we've not changed any weights in the head yet, but we, yeah. We, yeah, we have got the option to do that. That felt nice. A little bit left, but good flight. The path was quite a bit different then. So before you were kind of what, six degree? Um, yeah, so your path before six degrees straight away and that's gone to 2.7 degree. Yeah. Which is interesting. What, worse? No, so you were six degree out to him before. Yeah. That was only 2.7, right. which, is, which is gonna help kind of you know, create a better path and get a better flight. In that tea? Uh, I didn't, to be honest. I'm ready for a new one. There's some teas over there yeah. if you need them. Full speed's good again. Sack angle's changed. What I would say is, um, in terms of the head, yeah. I'm not stood over it feeling any less confident. Or I don't think look massively different. No, I don't um, feel any, in fact, I think all the differences from my angle, I can see the club face more. Yeah, but that's just because it's been opened up. Yeah, I can just see the red on the face more. So it actually looks like it's got more loft and gives you more confidence. Yeah, true. If anything. I think get that bit higher out at face, but. That was straighter though. Did it lose any ball speed? Uh, yeah, 146. It dropped a little bit. I think I just hit it higher out of this. That felt nice. Yeah, we've got one fading. We've got one fading. Yeah, so it's the face angle then 1.9, where, you know, beginning you were kind of like, you know, eight. So it's yeah. shifted massively. And that was with your path being exactly the same, you know, around that six degree mark. Yeah. Yeah, that was a bit better as well. We're starting to get... We're getting there, aren't we? Somewhere, aren't we, with this shape? Right, let's have a look now, then. So, we've seen the ball speed actually drop, yeah. which can happen because we've raised the loft. Yeah. There's not as, even though we've knocked the loft down again, but because the static loft of the head's higher, you're not yeah. putting as much pressure on the ball. So, obviously, we've sacrificed a little bit of ball speed, but obviously, it's gone a lot straighter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, your club head speed's actually gone up a fraction higher. So because your ball speed drops, your smash factor's not as optimum. But you know, looking now, launch 12.5, lot better. You know, spin 2.4, you know, really good number. Again, deviation's yeah. not too bad, definitely better than your current one. Yeah. Um, and then like I say, if you look now at kind of path and face, so face, uh, club path a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but like I said, you know, face angle, definitely a better number, you know, 4.9. Well, like I said, you were yeah, 7.4 before and 8.1 we are. So we're getting there slowly. Um, like I said, check dispersion. Yeah, so it's obviously, it looks quite wide because you've hit that one which did go right. But generally, yeah. like I said, it's, you've had one go left, fair enough. Could be a bit yeah. more swing related, but a lot more yeah, you know, then closer to the middle. A, a sort of more. Yeah, so more if you just target. take out that one you hit right. 
for now. We'll just I'll delete it. Yeah. Yeah, so straight away it's shifting more. Yeah. Again, you now you've kind of got it where your most left is only you know, just left is kind of your three yeah. decent ones, and then like I said, you're getting now a lot more, you know, centre there, and obviously one, you know, very see straight. That. Yeah. Well, like I said we, we can see it just because the face angles changes. Yeah. As soon as it's starting to open up more, like yeah. I said, your dispersion is just shifting. Um, yeah. So, like I said, definitely, definitely better. So, what we'll do now, Gary, because we've seen that you know a new head has definitely made a difference we'll try another head as well and then we can kind of decide which one you prefer and then yeah. go more in depth in terms of the shaft options so i said next one we'll look at is a tsr3 again because we've got that moving weight at the back we can get yeah. it into fade bias again and again higher loft to knock it down um, and just see how that kind of works for you so yeah we'll do that and again i think we'll stick with same shaft because i think you do like that shaft at the moment yeah. so like i said then it's a fair comparison as well between head and head yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll see what we can do. So in terms of heads, Sam, a lot of people sort of, you know, query me on how, imp what's the most important thing when you're getting a fitting? Is it what brand or is it just, is it, is, could you fit me for every brand and get a very similar result? How Sometimes, it, yeah. you always need to find a, a profile ahead that works for what you're needing. Yeah. So obviously for you, we don't need anything that's kind of, Wait, it's spin related. It's more, yeah. you know, fade and draw bias. So, like I said, not every brand would do that. Yeah. Um, you know, especially in like a lower profile head, like Callaway Paradigm, for example, they do a sliding weight, but only in a thing more forgiving head. Ah, right. Um, so, like I said, it all depends on. Yeah. Yeah. Every brand, every brand's gonna be different. So like I said, it's don't always come in wanting a certain brand because it's not always the case. Yeah. And like I said, there might be a brand which is out there which might get a bit more ball speed. Yeah. You know, which is also gonna help you more with the distance. Um, so yeah, always be open minded when you come into fitting. That's definitely a big thing. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so, so this will be TSR three, 10 degree, we'll knock it down, and then again we'll put the weight into maximum fade and yeah. see what we can do, and then we'll use the same shaft just to keep a uh, consistent kind of comparison really between the two heads, and then like I so said, you should then feel what head you prefer, yeah. and then uh, we'll go from there, and like I so said, we'll go a bit more in depth then. Some branded heads, so swing weight could be very different. And again, if it does go lighter, I think we will add a bit of weight in the back yeah. to try and, um, you know, help a bit, like I said, with the swing weight. Yeah, Are you so starting to think, like, I'm better off with more swing weight? I think so, yeah. I yeah. think just to help get the club face, you know, delaying it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and like I said, that's gone a little bit lighter, back to D4. Yeah. So I think I will add a little bit in the back. Right. Um, you can go quite a few grams heavy. And again, obviously, the more we add into the back, it's going to make even more fade biased, yeah. which isn't going to be a bad thing at all. Um, yeah, so I'm going to change that now for you. And again, what's quite different between these two ads? You've got sliding weight at the back on this, tailor made yeah. sliding weight at the front. Right. So, again, very different spin characteristics. Yeah. You know, if we needed to make it more fade biased and by adding more weight, tailor made is going to go a lot lower spinning, yeah. tires are going to go a lot higher spinning. Right. So, again, yeah, you, you, the odds are you wouldn't have the same shaft working in both heads. Yeah. Um, so, that would be why if you went to different brands, you could actually fit for different shafts. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. like I so said, just completely different profiles of heads. So potentially with this one, you could end up going for a lower spinning shaft because it's going to be high yeah. spin in the head. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like I said, you might need a high spinning shaft in the self too, yeah. just to counteract kind of a low low spin at the front. Um, I'll take this out. I don't know how much of this you're following at home, guys, but you know I've worked in industry 20 years and I'm learning things today in fit, about fitting equipment that I didn't know about. You know, obviously it's always a learning day when you're in golf. You're never going to know everything, um, and that's why I love doing these videos. I'm learning so much about golf clubs and fitting, and I can't wait to take that back to Huddersfield, really. Yeah, like I said, it's just it's gonna help your fitness back yeah, there, isn't it? Definitely. Um, so, so I've gone four gram heavier, so I'm not going all the way because we need yeah. some kind of room to kind of build up to. And again, so four grams, every two grams of weight you add to add to the head adds to the swing weight by one point. So we're gonna right. be adding about two swing points when we uh check it again in a second. So like I said, get it still back to maximum fade for now. That way upside down. What driver have you got in bag? Paradigm, triple Paradigm. diamond. But it's um, it is good. It's just me at the minute. I'm not playing. <laughs> I really need to stop playing more. 
Yeah, so you see it's gone up straight away. Should be about D6-ish or just over. Yeah, so D6 and a half. So I think that's going to be the heaviest option. So we're going to fraction heavier again. Yeah. But like I said, more weight in the heel. Uh, sorry, more weight in the toe. We're going to get it more fade biased even more. So like I said, it's hopefully get it shifting more with dispersion again. I can't believe how much having that weight um, towards the toe is making the club look open. Yeah. You know, not open, sorry, lofted. Yeah. So when I yeah, put that like so down... It definitely will shift in again, because we've knocked the loft down a little bit, that's going to help as well. Yeah. As, Usually um, on, on drivers I use, guys, you know, you don't get to see much loft on the face. And actually seeing that loft on the face, it's inspiring me. Yeah, it? a bit more forgiving. It you know, a, bit a bit more, more comfort thing. Confidence, yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You caught the tea, that skill. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had a reverse camera. That felt very nice off the face. Oh, that weren't very good, eh? That bottom, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'll take one out, don't worry. Definitely higher launching. But at the moment, it's not definitely not shifting as much left to right. Yeah. Face is just staying short. So if you look at data already, I don't know we've only hit a few, but I'll tell you a bad swing one out, which was that shot before, wasn't it? Yeah. I like quite that last one. The launch is good, uh, but it's just getting that face angle, you know, more short. That's actually more short than what your current setup is. Yeah. But the path's actually more across as well. Um, well, like I said, you look at the Diamond before and the Stealth. So, like I said, we kept the exact same shaft. Yeah. All we've done is change ahead. So, the path has gone from 5.1 originally in the, in the Stealth head to 8.5. And, like I said, face angle has gone from 5.5 to 9.8. I'm going to be honest, Sam. Um, I came into this thinking I won't mind taking a Titleist driver over today. But I'm having actually just tried it. Yeah. I think it distorted me a little bit, and I, you know, I didn't really know what I was yeah, doing. Yeah, like I said, ball speed, ball speed similar, but your launch and spins high, which is understandable because yeah. we've added more weight at the back. But for me, it's just a face angle. You I know. think I've actually probably got more use of that still driver than I actually thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, like I said, it's even though it's meant to be performing similar because yeah. of, you know it's still a fade bias weight. Um, you know, like I said, every brand is going to be different. And like I so said, your cage, you, you just can't get the face as neutral as the tailor made. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said, for me, you would be going down the, uh, yeah, the tailor made it, route. It, it were nice to sort of like get rid of that question mark in the back of my mind. Yeah, and a, lot, that, a lot of it is peace of mind. Like I said, you, you need to be, you know, having 100% confidence when yeah. you're on the course. Um, and like I said, you know, you, you were umming and ahhing over a tireless, but now you know it's just not performing as well. So, yeah. you know, you can focus more on the tailor made. Yeah, I don't uh, want to sort of like exhaust trying to get this right when there's no reason to. No, like I said, it's you know. obviously the point of fitting is not having to feel like you haven't really change anything in your swing. The yeah. clubs are meant to do that for you. And like I said, you know, what the numbers are creating with a tireless, you would have to really work on your, your path and your face angle yeah. to get it to work, which there's no need to do that. Um, so yeah, like I said, if we yeah focus more now on the um, tailor made, and yeah. like I said, we we'll try and get that dialed in even more, basically. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll uh, we'll have a look. Like I said, we know the shaft, you know, decent option. Yeah. But like I said, I think there's definitely more options to try. Uh, I think one next one to go down the route is probably like a Ventus Red. Right. Something like you know, again, a bit high launch, a little bit high spinning, but again, I feel like we might need to add a bit more weight in the sliding weight. Yeah. Um, so again, counter out with a shaft, so it's not going to be too kind of dippy ball flight, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll try with Ventus Red. Yeah, so like I said, we're going to be trying next with Ventus Red TR5 stiff. I've gone 5 stiff just to see if we can get a little bit more launch. Obviously, tailor made at the minute is performing well in terms of the face angle, but it's still a little bit flatter, definitely compared to the tire list. Yeah. So I think, like I said, we'll try 5 stiff. Might feel too soft potentially, but obviously being a high-end shaft, you might still yeah. get a good, you know, stable kind of feeling. I feel like Ventus are exploding on the scene a little bit. Yeah, Ventus have been really popular. Wow. Um, but just a good shaft end of the day. A lot you see like percentage of pros that play like events on tours, but it's definitely the highest kind of playing shaft yeah. out of anything. 
and you know it's just I've tried them before other people I've fit and into them and they just feel really good just feel very stable yeah. you know you've got three different profiles which kind of covers everything um, well, like I said, we're going in the red just to kind of help with the launch and what we're going to be doing as well, um, because obviously the shaft's a little bit high launching, we don't want the spin creeping up, so we're going to add a bit more weight in the um, sliding weight, might have to take a bit out of the back, we'll see in a second, um, but like I said, just to try and get the characteristics a bit better for you. So, still going to be low aloft, and then, um, like I said, I'm going to check what the swing weight is now. Well, I will point out, this has got a mid-size grip on, which Gary does prefer anyway. Um, like I said, that's going to make the swing weight drop a little bit. But like I said, we can easily get it rebalanced. That's not a problem. So yeah, you can see, obviously a bit lighter shaft from the Diamana. Mid-size grip. It's gone to standard D2, but obviously we know we need to go a bit heavier to yeah. get your kind of preference with a weighting. Um, yeah, so let's see what we can do for this or weights for that yeah you just got to cover up all your grounds really make sure it's uh i mean no one's ever fitted no me for such to... a, a white shaft um, <laughs> yeah but... it, it might not work but i think it'd be worth definitely trying it to see if it can get the launch up obviously we can we can raise the loft again to get the launch up but we need that face angle open what what sam was saying off camera is because the profile of the shaft is built better you, you can go into a lighter shaft, whereas when they're like stock shafts, sometimes you... Yeah, like a stock shaft in a 50-odd gram would be too definitely too soft for you. Like, would that mean it'd be too torquey? Maybe too torquey. The actual firmness of the shaft, you know, you can have a stiff, it can generally high-end shafts would play a little bit firmer. Yeah. Um, so like I said, because it's high-end shaft, you can get away with going a little bit lighter and in still built flex. better, more graphite. Yeah, kind exactly. Of yeah, it's just built better, basically. Yeah. Um, right, so what do I need here? All right, so we're going to go to a 22 gram now, where it was a 15 gram before. So adding seven grams into the um, sliding way. But again, if we keep it on to the fade setting, it's just going to make it more fade wise, basically. Um, so yeah, so we'll pop this weight in and we'll double check the swing way. But it should get you to about D5, I think. Around about D5, maybe D6. Did you get... Um would you say majority of golfers come with fittings where you were sort of like low handicaps or high handicaps? Or? I fitted everyone. I fitted from like kind of, you know, minor, mini, mini tour pros playing on like the clutch tour to, you know, complete beginners really. Does it ever surprise you like what equipment some of these good players are using? Um, in terms of like poorly fitted or? Yeah, like I've, I've had a few where it's been surprising. Yeah. Um, it, it can just, yeah. It, I have had some people have said, oh, I've been fit a certain place, and it is a surprise. It's like you, for example, you've been fitted on a demo day where yeah. you know, we should have more shaft options, all the head options, and obviously straight away we've seen we need to go lighter, softer, different loft, completely different club. You know, nothing's mean, the same. I'm no one to give advice to manufacturers, but I almost feel as though, I don't mean to say this in a rude way, but sometimes the staff that are fitting, it can be the first ever fitting job. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I think that brands should appreciate like us pay more for better quality for, for more like highly trained staff. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, like somebody like yourself, Sam, you can't expect them to do that job for, for twenty five grand a year, can you? No, no, you I know, like, completely agree. So they're You've never got to a... attract like highly qualified, experienced fitters, which I think if they want to take it to a new level, why wouldn't you? Yeah, hundred percent. We need to, you know. I say make sure the staff are paying properly, then they'll want to go more in depth. If you're yeah. paying them, you know, peanuts, we're not wanting to go in this well, uh, I detail. Really. They're kind of looking for the next job before they've even got into it. Yeah, aren't they? exactly. Yeah, like I said, it's not just brand, it's just, you know, I won't say many companies, but, you know, there'll be a lot of different companies where, like I said, if I think if they did better training, I think they could just provide a better service, really. So you can see straight away, swing weights gone a lot higher. Okay, so this is a fraction of a four, but again, we need to still be exploring the swing weight. So, like, this has gone to D7 now, so definitely the heaviest you've tried. Right. It might feel too heavy. If, if so, we can go a little bit lighter weight. Um, but, like I said, so now, lot added, what, seven grams into the toe, makes it more fade bias. We've counteracted by going lower spinning with, you know, a bit softer shaft, a bit higher launching. Right. So, um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it plays. Change of tone here. 
definitely the shape. Better man. launch, good spin. Definitely trying to come back, wasn't it? Yeah. It's fading again. I certainly feel like I'm getting through these well. That was good. Very good launch and spin again. Ball speed went up a bit. I feel as though, like, for some reason, I'm feeling a bit more confidence to let go, you know, like, not holding back. Yeah. I'm feeling good with this, Sam. Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> oh, straightest one you've done. Really good launch and spin. Really good distance. I'm even waggling club around. I never do that. Yeah. <laughs> just, I don't know, because I can feel the weight at the bottom more. It's, it's enticing me to just be soft with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> that will munch like lunchtime. So I just got a face short, but it was a good strike again. And again, numbers were decent in terms of launch and spin. I'm definitely swinging with more freedom. That's all I can say. And that's credit to the club. I say ball speed's really shooting up a little bit now. Yeah. You're getting into kind of 158, 159. So obviously then that's going to get your smash factor up. Yeah, it's gone up a bit. Yeah, great shot. I'm getting some okay. confidence. <laughs> what I've seen as well then, your club head speed's gone up, and I think yeah. a lot of it is your, your confidence is going up. Yeah. So straight away, you get a lot more comfortable with the club. Yeah, this is one where, and I haven't felt this from being a junior, is where, you know when there's that green at 325, you're confident enough to actually give it yeah. some. Because I've been trying to swing within myself, but maybe more because I'm lacking confidence. I say, you're looking now at the face angle, you know, you know 2.1 shot, but it's now matching your path. Yeah. Uh, like I said, you always, you always want your face angle half of your path to kind of get a correct kind of ball fly. Like I said, now we're achieving it, where before your face angle was more than your path. I'll be calling Bri Roberts out soon. <laughs> Stepped on that one. Stepped on that. Quite excited. Probably need to calm down a bit now. <laughs> well, in fairness, I know you've hit that left, but yeah. it's probably not as left as what you were doing anyway. But like I said, your ball speed then shot up a lot. Yeah, you've, you've swung quicker, but you've got the yeah. confidence. But your launch and spin wasn't too bad. It was a, you could argue it was a fraction low spin, but more probably because you've had to face a little bit more shot. I, I love this shaft. Yeah, I think it's performing really well. And, but like I said, you know, it's good launch. Spin's definitely on the low side, but it's consistent. So I don't mind it being low if it's a good deviation, which it is. It's the best yeah. one we've had at 209. You compare to your own, you know, 622. Yeah. You know, there's a lot more fluctuation. You've had from 1400 to 3100 with yours. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's only varied Does that from... come down to the quality of shaft then? It can be. And again, it's just the, the quality of... It's like I'm being big headed. The quality of a fitting, really, yeah. you know, because we've now found a characteristic in the We're spec. We're not going to be able to get him out of that door in a minute. <laughs> but like I said, because we've now found something which is working, you know, yeah. it, it, all the deviations better. You, you know, your launch is only 0 0.7 fluctuating, where before 1.8, like I said, spins a lot more consistent. But like I said, face angle, you know, it's now four short, where like I said before, again, you were 8.1. We've literally halved your face angle. Yeah. Like I say, if you look at the dispersion, maybe, take maybe the key is, guys, forget lessons, coming over 15. <laughs> yeah, they definitely do go hand in hand. I mean, I have people where there's nothing a fitting's going to do, you know, yeah. if you're swinging not well, no matter how much you make it, say, fade bias, someone's yeah. gonna, always going to hit it left. It's a good point to talk about because a lot of people are reluctant to have a fitting when they're not hitting the ball the best. But, you know, swing changes aren't easy. Maybe no. sometimes you have got to get fitted yeah. to make the most of what you've got. Yeah, exactly. So that's the point of getting fitted. It's getting tailored to your swing characteristics. And like I said, yeah. sometimes you might feel like you're struggling, but it might just be a case you, your setup's not correct. Yeah. Um, perfect example, um, the, the private teachers here, he started kind of, he had a client and he was blocking everything with his irons. Wasn't sure why. He then had an iron fitting a week later with me and his line goal were too flat. Yeah. So as soon as we changed the line goal, yeah, everything dead straight. Yeah. So it wasn't so much his swing, it was the clubs. Yeah. So like I said, it's, you know, coaching and fitting definitely does come hand in hand. Yeah. 
um, but it's, it's trying to get, trying to work with people which, you know, can you know, help each other out, really. Um, but yeah, like I said, in terms of, delete that one. So I just want to compare now your own and that one. So it should be that. Yeah, I mean, hugely different. Yeah. You know, you've got them, it's just flowing now. I think that was the one we, we took out just for the uh, purpose of the yeah. comparison. But, you know, we've completely shifted. Still in fairway, guys. Well, still in fairway. Still fairway. Well, that's fairway. the thing. So we thought, oh, that's a bit left, but it's still yeah. probably your second best equivalent in terms of your dispersion with your own. Yeah. So, yeah, it went left, but still at fairway, end of the day, you know. Um, we're getting but, over yeah, that 300 he, yard line. Yeah, like I said, it's <laughs> getting very close. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's the thing we're not discussed yet, actually, is distance. Obviously, 265, nearly 266 carry, 295 total. With removing the one, you, you went after it a bit more to keep it fair. 283, so yeah, gain, what, 12 yards yeah. of total. And then carry with gain 12 oh, yards. So gain 12 yeah. yards of oak. Yeah. Um, and again, more consistent launch, better spin. And, um, and, and because of the flow of that old, my original shaft, I couldn't swing like that. Yeah. I just couldn't. It just no, didn't it, feel it was right. too. It was just too firm. You, you couldn't, like I said, it, it is hard to feel it when it's just so... The head just feels like seven. it wants to go on this. Yeah, but that's the thing. You, you've gone, we've gone from a 70X to like a mid-50s stiff. Yeah. You know, it's completely different setup, but it's just working for you. Like it I said, it doesn't even feel like it's softer. Or... No, and like I said, because it's we've had we've had to go higher end by going that profile yeah. um, to to make it feel stable. Um, but yeah, but that's that's a point of you know different shaft options. You know, it's there will be some which are a bit more niche, like that one for yeah. example. Um, but yeah, like I said, you're going to create way more feel with that being. You know, better swing weight, so it's more comfortable. We're just, you know, softer profile. Yeah. Um, I said we'll look at one, maybe two more options to double check, but that's going to be hard to beat, I think. Yeah, definitely. So, what are you looking to beat now with them numbers? Uh, for me, I would say probably just to get the launch and spin a fraction higher. Yeah. So, you know, launch would be great for kind of, I'd say probably that, to be fair, that, that one there, kind of 12.723, if you could get that as like your average or maybe a slightly lower one, you know, then like I said, just get a little bit more carry. You can see there as well. So that yeah. one's carried 268, where a lot of yours are kind of 264, can, 265. Can I ask you a question then? Yeah. Do you feel like there's any way back for Diamond or not? No, I, I just think, well, not GT, potentially yeah. another shaft. For yeah. me, I'd probably go TB, and again, you do the same, you try 50 SIF. I've yeah. got, uh, you can do 50 or 60, but... And, and the only reason I say that, guys, is because Diamond is something that I used for probably 10 years as a younger golfer. Yeah. Uh, went away from it a bit over the last few years, but always used to love Diamond. Yeah. yeah. So I think the last two I think we'd try would be, we'll go back to Diamond, but TB yeah. in the 50 SIF. And then um, I'll probably say the Tour ADI. Yeah. And then again, I've got it in the five stiff, six stiff, whichever you kind of prefer. Uh, but again, yeah. that's quite a high launch, low spin option. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's, but again, it's maintaining that feel, which we've been able to do. It, I'd say you prefer the feel of a Diamond maybe, but obviously that's a big Well, I would say from... this is the best I've tried so far, and I'm not opposed to going for Ventus. It was just a question of, yeah. is, has Diamond got a shaft that you think could, you know, yeah, like I said, it'd be the TV. So like I said, it yeah. is mid-launch, mid-spin. Uh, I, I might say it's not as high launching as Viventus, mm. but we'll, we'll see. Obviously, it's going to depend on the individual who are hitting it. Right, so we're going to go to now Diamond or TV. We're staying with 50 stiff just because it worked well with Viventus Red. I've yeah. got it in 60 if we need to go a bit heavier. Um, but like I said, if we can kind of replicate the same feel as we yeah. did with a, with a GT version, um, but like I said, just with a kind of high launch and high spinning kind of package and... It's going to be ideal, and again we'll check the uh, check the swing weight, see if we need to do any kind of tweaks with the weight again. But again, I think it definitely helped, kind of adding more mass into the toe and yeah. into the sliding weight. Uh, but like I said, it comes with a price of kind of being a bit lower spinning. Yeah. But like I said, I think we can give it a little tweak with Ventus if needed. Okay, so this has actually gone heavier. Reason being as well, we'll keep it a fair comparison. This has gone back to a standard grip. 
So again, because of that, the swing weight's going to go a bit heavier. So we'll yeah. need to remove a little bit of mass. Right. Yeah, so the reason I'm taking out the back is because we've added more weight in the front with when we try the Ventus. I really liked how all of sort of the face angle was a lot better, a lot straighter yeah. shots. So I don't really want to be taking it back out again at the front. So I'm going to take it out the, um, the back. Like I said, it's... Was a 15, we're gonna to go to a 10. And that's to try and lower the swing weight. Uh, yeah, because we changed the shaft, the swing weight just changed quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so just to rebalance it again, basically. So yeah, we'll go to a 10 gram from 15, and it's, yeah, so it's fine, it's just under D7. That D6 and a half, D7, so that's fine. So give that a whirl. So still lower loft at the moment. Like I so said, we, we could maybe tweak it depending what your kind of ball flight's gonna be like. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it, it's gotta be straight out of the, out of the gates, kind of really performing to, you know, compare against the Ventus Red. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna change. Fairly good, a little bit left, just a bit low spin. The only problem you don't want, you don't want that fluctuation straight away because obviously yeah. then it's going to you know, get your deviation. It's already in two shots, your deviation is 739, which that's never now going to get any better than that. I hate to admit it because, um, you know, I do like, I've always loved Diamond Shafts, but yeah, it's... I mean, we weren't, like, we were both you know, relatively straight, but yeah. it, again, we need that consistent that deviation. Yeah, it, it just tells you it's not working 100%. Go one more, but yeah, like I said, because Aventus was so good, it really needs to be standing out instantly to, to compare. I'm, I feel like I'm not doing anything differently. But it's just staying left, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like... For some reason, I felt as though I were getting a fade going with the other one. Yeah. Whereas I don't want to have to try, try and, f you know, absolutely yeah, so chop you, across it to get a fade. Club head speed is exactly the same. Ball speed's dropped a little bit. I know we've only hit three, but we have four kind of eventers so far. But smash factor's dropped a little bit. Um, so as an average, launch and spin's good, but obviously it's varied quite a lot. So your deviations, you know, way higher, similar yeah. to existing setup. So yeah, like I said, I think last one would be kind of, I think Tori, the, um, we'll look at the DI, yeah. see how that performs. Um, if not, I think, yeah, Ventus is really good. We'll, we'll hit it again, might just do a little tweak potentially with a loft, see if we can yeah. still get it. Um, pretty straight ball fly, but a little bit higher launch and spin. Yeah. Uh, if not, we've found a, a very good option in that anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's go Tori DDI. I like blue. You like blue? <laughs> I'm only joking. I think it's more of a launch for me. Yeah. With a DI being a little bit higher. Um, I can't have that middle one because everyone will say it's fake. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Yeah, it's, like, they are genuine. Don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, I think we'll, we'll try six stiff in this first. If I feel like... It's performing well, but we can maybe get a little bit higher launch, then we'll go yeah. five stiff. Um, but I think the shaft should kind of do what it's needing to do to to get that launch. What What is interesting about this shaft is I used to use the Diamond and Blue board, okay. uh, which Tiger were using, Then went to and, and then I started using White board, which Tiger used as well. And then he uses, he's used this for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, he did use it for a bit. I'm not DI. linking myself to Tiger in any way. It's like to... But, but it's, yeah, his footsteps. I wonder if it could be coincidence. And Rory's got this in his stealth hunt. Uh, no, he's got Ventus Blue. Has he, he, has he, he had he, that? Or is um, Tiger? I don't think he's had it. He, Rory did have black and then he went to blue for a bit more control yeah. of the spin, I think. Um, but yeah, obviously quite a few on tour still use a DI. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, obviously Speed's kind of famous one for kind of using it as well. Um, so same again. Check kind of what it's balancing up at. See if we need to tweak anything. Again, obviously going a little bit heavier again if that's going to make a difference. Okay, it might be 
worth staying as it is. See how it feels. So this has gone a tiny bit heavier than what the Ventus was. So yeah. D seven and a half. You might not really feel it, but again, I don't really want to be taking any weight out of the toe again. Yeah. Um, so it's still got the ten gram at the back from when we just tried it with Diamana. Um, but like I said, I really don't want to be messing about with, yeah. with the toe weight just because it's really helped. Yeah, we just yeah. want the fade. And I've got a lot heavier options in that. Yeah. But again, it's making sure the swing rate's correct. You know, we could yeah. really make it turn left to right. And also, you don't want to lose too much spin, do you? Yeah, exactly. That's the only issue with it. So yeah, we can go heavier, yeah. make it more fade bias, but then the spin would really drop. Yeah. So again, it's getting that right balance with everything. Um, but yeah, I think as it is, that's going to be fine to go. Um, Again, so low a lot for now. We can tweak it if we need to, if we feel like it's performing well. Oh, I didn't like that. That felt like it really cut. Mm, pretty straight, just a little bit spinny. Yeah, it just felt like one of them that you, you lose right. I don't like it. No? It feels... Like, I don't know where the head is again. Right, okay. Um, and that's the thing, it's not like we've got a lighter swing weight. That's the heaviest one we've tried. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like so that's just going to be more the, the characteristics of the I don't shaft. know why, but I'm feeling the shaft more than the head. Right, okay. Do you know, like, I'm not, that head's not feeling as it wants to... I don't it's know. It's kind of power through. I don't no, know. That's fine. Like I said, it's... Shall I eat one more? Yeah, go one more it's to double one check, the, but... It, yeah, you, you've got a lot to feel of it. Like I said at the beginning, you know, if you wanted a driver where you know where everything is, you, yeah. you, can, you can get good rhythm. I were hoping um, it were going to be, be a good... Like I said, you know, I like already look. are renowned for being quite smooth. Um, yeah. So it's not for everyone. It's just the strike just don't feel as good with this shaft, but even when I catch it... That, yeah, that, I mean, ball speed dropped on that last one. Like that first one, you were telling me, oh, it looks all right, numbers are good, but it felt crap. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. I didn't get the pleasure out of the strike. No, that's fair enough. Like that there, probably were a good strike, a centre hit, but it just didn't feel, it didn't do all well for me. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, ball speed's still not as quick, you know, like, so you're kind of 158, 159 with that Ventus. Yeah. Um, like I say, it definitely stood out compared to everything else. You're mainly ball speed and then just consistency with the shot shape and the deviation. Yeah. Um, I think it is going to be a Ventus reg. I think what we'll do now, we'll build it up as it was before yeah. and then see if we need to do any little minor tweaks, whether it's you know changing the ratio of the weighting mm. system or the loft. But I think in terms of the head and shaft combination, I think that's the winner, Just really. Just to summarise on this, guys, what I'm feeling is, is I ain't got the flow to hit it confidently and hard. I'm feeling like I'm yeah. backing off it already. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm feeling as though if I were to really hit it hard, I just don't know what's going to happen. Whereas I've got some confidence with that Ventus that... I felt as I can just keep hitting this harder and harder. Yeah, which is, which is what you want. You, yeah. you want that confidence. And I've seen it quite a lot in fittings where as soon as I find something which really feels good to him, you, you yeah. can see the club head speed go up a little bit. Yeah. Um, just because, like I said, having that confidence, knowing you can give it a bit more and it's got to stay stable and you know good consistency. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I think we'll go back to the Ventus. Um, you know, double check obviously it's still creating similar numbers and yeah. then like I said if we need to do any little tweaks we can do but I think that's for a winning combination I would agree I would agree it's something that I, I, you might even have seen in the video I was just starting to smile yeah you know you just find something you're like wow yeah um, and like I said it's getting that feeling this. which you've not experienced yeah. in a long time potentially like you said yeah. it was you said it was like quite a long time ago when you felt like a driver felt similar um, and like I said, it's getting that feeling back, which... I've you know, not felt confident with a driver for 10 years. And I've only just started hitting more drivers this year because I'm playing more golf. Yeah. And getting it on park, but not swinging freely like I've just done with them. Yeah, so still D7. So yeah, it's the exact same setup we had a second ago. Right. Um, so yeah, if you uh, hit a few more just to double check. Feels amazing, honestly. Tiny bit left, but it's you know, nice to see we spin go a little bit higher. You don't even, you know, regardless of the actual flight of the ball, the strike just the, feels good. The strike just. I like feels... I said, that, that's that's half a battle. I think just you know 
feeling nice off a of face and again that's going to just help a lot with your confidence it's like a trampoline off face whereas the other ones i'm not feeling that as well as much yeah and i were a bit anxious then waiting to it that thinking well you know i'll put this like i did earlier because yeah i always make sure you hit it twice yeah. um you know just to make sure it wasn't a fluke really That weren't my best swing, but... Well, not too bad, but straight away, look at your ball speed. That's quick as you've done. Yeah. Launch was actually a really good number then for that... Uh, sorry, spin was a really good number for that launch. And again, when, that 290 mark. When just, I said it weren't my best swing, sorry, if, Sam, for interrupting, it felt sorry. a bit towards heel, if anything. Right, but it, that does show kind of the, the forgiveness you've still got from it. Yeah. So that was... Yeah, so it was a little bit left, but again, it's in the fairway. Uh, but again, look at your ball speed. That's the quickest ball speed you've had. Yeah. As well, like, I've never ever waggled a golf club yeah. for some reason. I've developed a waggle with this, I must well, like it. <laughs> it. must be like a dog with a waggly tail <laughs> when they get excited. I've never ever done that. <laughs> don't know. I, well, I don't think that's, a, you know, the technology. I think that's just uh, a spare you, right? I'm guaranteed to waggle a few Oh, God. Because I like the feel of it, I think. Yeah, we're I mean, not ripped. That was ripped. 161. Wrap it up. That was perfect. That was perfect. Yeah, perfect for you, not perfect for me. Well, I said, you know, straight away you get that confidence is coming again. You know, 110 club head speed. You've not really seen anything like that. And, you know, I don't think that was one way you kind of went after it. Yeah, but like I said, ball speed 161, really good launch and spin again. A um, bit different spin to before, but again, it's not an issue with deviations good. It's still doing what it's meant to do. Can someone tag Robinson right now and zoom in on this? I'm coming for him. No, that's 20 pounds. I'm calling him out. But what we can do now, which Trapman does have. That height as well is just better than when you first came out. So this is the optimizer system, which we haven't used yet. Basically, this shows you where you could potentially gain a bit more. Yeah. Um, so the only thing it is saying is your ball speed, which was, even though that was a quick one, it's yeah. still saying your smash factor, where is it? It's hard in somewhere. Where is it? 1.46, where it's yeah. saying obviously optimum is about 1.5. But in terms of your, your spin loft, your launch angle, your spin rate, your high, everything's yeah. you know, perfect. Like I said, the only thing that is just efficiency of kind of, you know, getting the ball speed. The only thing I would say maybe a fraction low is more the path you're creating. Yeah. So because the path's a little bit obviously out to win, you're cutting across it a little bit, which yeah. is going to drop the ball speed. But if that's what you want to do, it's fine. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, this data, you know, it's working really well. Like yeah. I said, so you can see carry... Oh, carrying it 2.7, you could potentially get to 2.75 if you yeah. get your ball speed a bit quicker. And again, total 2.90 you got then. Could maybe get 2.97, so you could maybe get even more on it. Yeah. But that shows it's more down to you to work on your swing yeah. and get the ball speed up just through like efficiency of strike. But in terms of the actual data, it's you know spot on. I'm really happy with this. Dan's just booking a few lessons in behind camera. <laughs> <laughs> He's on speed dial to Calibur. Yeah, carry, yeah, carry now 266, uh, 292 basically for your total. Again, you look at your setup at the beginning. Yeah, 252, 281. So, yeah, you, you've gained a, a fair chunk. Then if we go to dispersion, uh, it's got to take out to AB, don't want it? Yeah, it's just night and day. Yeah. It's completely different. There's not one that's missed the fairway, and that's the main thing. Exactly. You know, even with your most left where you think, oh, my, maybe not a great swing. Yeah. Still hitting middle, you know, edging of fairway. Yeah. And like I said, you've only had one there, which was substantially more right. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it's, yeah, you've got, you've completely got rid of the left side of the course now. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, one bang online, so that's, that speaks for itself, doesn't it? Um, yeah, end of the day, we've gained, I'd say, around about 12 yards carry in total and a lot straighter, yeah. which is, you know, brilliant. What did Gaz have fitted when he came down? Uh, he had a Ventus Black. Oh, so you were Ventus as well. Then yeah. we could have a Ventus off, because we've been saying we're going to get a game. Have you? Gaz Golf first, Gaz Golf. Yeah. Ventus off. 
Yeah, yeah, he had a black uh, six X. Could be a good one. Right? I think that's been performing well. Um, but no, that's really good data. Um, yeah, like I said, I think you've kind of managed to get that feel as well. Yeah. Uh, which you were wanting to achieve, but got the numbers to back it up. Cool. So perfect. So guys, it took us two hours. I'm not sh quite sure, you know, obviously through editing how long this video is going to be, but I think yeah. it's going to be quite a long one. Yeah, like, like I said, we, you know, we've tried all the options we needed to try. We've not skipped anything now. You know, I've done, I've fitted you like I would anyone else. Yeah. Um, but like I said, in terms of the performance, what we've got in the end, it's been really good. Well, I would have never dreamt of being a 50, is it 50 grams? Uh, no, it'd be kind of exact way, it'd be kind of mid to high 50s, I think. But yeah, yeah a lot lighter than what you had previously, and yeah. obviously stiff flex. And all, but it do not feel only a stiff flex, that's the thing. Yeah. If it did, I mean, you could you could cover that up, and I wouldn't, I'd just think it an extra stiff. Yeah. Because it's got the stability and feel of, like, it feels like an extra stiff, but it plays nice, it's got the yeah, feel like so if, if you went to X, I think you'd have just lost that feel again. Yeah. Um, and I think the ball speed might have dropped a little bit, not again as much kind of kick into the shaft. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think it, it did what it needed to do, and like I said, the consistency is there. Just for the subscribers at home, what are we sort of talking price point wise for that shaft? Yeah, so like I said, I sold them at 300. Yeah. So it's obviously the highest end shaft but you can see you know when you pay a bit extra you yeah. do get that performance question is then all right so i buy this shaft at 300 pound next year or year after yeah i decide that you know i want to update the head yeah is this something it's something that... i can sort so say for example i don't know a ping as an example you know yeah. like i really want a ping head but i still want the same shaft it's yeah. not a problem with me swapping the adapters you know like I said, we'd have to double check off so the shaft's going to perform just as well, but yeah. you know, it's, the odds are it's going to be a very good well, option. Well, the only thing I'm thinking, and there's no point in lying to you guys, at some point in the next 12 months, there might be a new tailor made driver yeah. coming out. Yeah, exactly. So if I want to put that head on. That's fine, because it's going to be the same adapter as far yeah. as I'm aware. Yeah, it'd be a case of just trying that head, making sure it's performing <laughs> similar. Yeah. Uh, but I think it should do. All yeah. you do, same. Same concept, ten and a half degree. Yeah. They, they will do a sliding weight option. I think I've seen a picture of it already. And like I said, it was just uh, same same thing. Get a lot yeah. of weight in the toe, get it turning over. So you can just replicate it easy enough. Well, I think it, I think we'll wrap it up on that. Yeah, brilliant, guys. Hope you've enjoyed that full fitting with Sam at Golf Repairs for you. Uh, loving the new fitting room as well. Yeah, so like I said, just working out here on my own studio, going a bit back and forth. Yeah, it's good to be based at a golf club as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's the same service regardless, anywhere I go. So if you're interested in a fitting, guys, you've got any fitting, you know, queries, then, you know, get in contact with Sam. We'll get his contact details in there. We'll put the addresses on your fitting facilities as well because you've got a couple of options. Uh, but I'm sure you could advise the guys at home where to... Yeah, yeah, depending on what best. you want fitted on, depends where we go. But um, like I said, I can bring the same equipment, so it's no issue. If you're still here, guys, get in the comments, leave us a like, um, and also... If you're enjoying these videos, we've got Dan having a fitting today. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be having some tailor-made wedges fitted. Yeah. Um, which, you know, if you want to see what's entitled in a professional wedge fitting, then you need to obviously make sure you subscribe and watch that video because I think it'll be, be pretty eye-opening. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I think most people sort of add a set of wedges into the set and they just match up specs, don't they? Yeah, really? a lot of time they just do an off-the-shelf spec, and same for like a lot of demo options. We'll just be standard length, standard line, nothing special. Yeah. Well, like I said, I've got the shaft options. We can change quite a few things. We can work it out. So we'll be back here soon, guys. Um, and yeah, hopefully you'll be see us in a couple of days' time. Bye.